Hey folks, welcome back. Come on inside today. I'm going to show you a few things that I've been up to recently. Don't, uh, don't worry too much about the project you see behind you. That's a story for another day. I'm a bit groggy today because like many of you folks out there, you live out in the bush and you get some wildlife encounters. Last night was no exception. I had to basically get up onto the roof and make the realization that I have a family of raccoons living in my attic. So after I got the dog calmed down and after I uh, sort of realized that my, my uh, night time is pretty much canceled, I uh, woke up this morning and decided I better do something that's on the positive side because last night was not fun. Anyways, the raccoons are still in the attic. I'm trying to get them out of there. That will be a story for another day. Today, I'm going to talk about one of the new toys that I've recently acquired. And you guys probably have seen in my very first video where I unboxed it. What that is, is right here behind you. You can see it on the board. And you can see it right here in front of you. This is the Woodland Mills Sawmill Blade Tooth Setter. I think I got it all. This is a really brand new product from Woodland Mills and one that I... I was fortunate to get my hands on. I put my order in just early enough before they became uh, back ordered, from what I understand. So I ordered this about a month ago. Uh, I've had a chance to get it unboxed, check out my first video to see that, and I've also had a chance to put some miles on it. I got a chance to use it. I'm going to show you guys exactly what my first experiences have been with this thing. I've been pretty satisfied with it thus far, and I find that the learning curve for this, although it can be a little steep, it is quite manageable once you get the hang of it. So I'm going to show you how I go about getting things set up. I made a little bit of a handy dandy setup here that, you know, took about four screws and two pieces of wood and you guys might want to use for yourself. Before we get here though, before I show you exactly how I set my teeth, I want to bring your attention back to this guy. This is a typical bandsaw blade. If you guys have a good close look there, you're going to see that this thing is well rusted. A lot of surface rust on this. This was actually hanging out by my sawmill for quite some time with a whole bunch of other used bandsaw blades. I talked about throwing them out at one point and then I remembered that these things, when it's said and done, cost about $22 Canadian each. Therefore, if I can extend their life a little bit, that's going to save me some money. Hence why I have the tooth setter, hence why I have the sharpener. Sharpener's here behind me, you guys will see that in another video. Anyways. I'm going to show you how I bring some life back into this blade using a wire wheel and an angle grinder. I tend to do this before I bring it over to my tooth setter so that I'm not playing around with rusty dull blades. I want to have something at least baseline, something decent to start with. So I'm going to show you how that works, how you clean up the blade. Don't have too big of a uh, elaborate setup here other than a board clamp to my workbench. Show you how that works, then we'll set some teeth. We'll see where we end up. Anyways, a bit groggy today. Darn raccoons. We'll make the best of it. Thanks for being here. Someone made a joke recently, and uh, I'll have to look and see who it was, but it was pretty funny. They said, uh, your work gloves are pretty much like a golf course. It's got 18 holes, and I'm going to agree with you. These gloves are definitely well past their prime. Anyways, back to it. So here we go. I just have this board set up here, and what I use this board for is basically just gives me something to uh, to put a bit of down pressure onto the blade and uh, I, I basically just rotate it and so I go ahead and do that and then eventually what I do if I want to do the inside I uh, literally just hold you guys can see where my hand is I just hold it with my one hand and I do a bit of grind in there and then I go like this do a bit of grind in there and when I say grinding I mean the steel wheel grinding and uh, I just go along and do it that way so I'll just show you how I do this Nothing too fancy. Make sure your safety equipment's on, obviously. And you guys get the point there. And one thing I'm going to mention, I like to use a wire wheel as opposed to the uh, the wire cup. Um, the reason is this, this grinder, it tends to vibrate quite a bit with the wire cup, whereas the wire wheel tends to uh, keep it nice and steady. But as you can see, that took me, what, 15 seconds? Really took off that surface rust. And uh, I would simply go around and 
finish that off and then do the other side and uh, that's really about it so I'm gonna go ahead and do that you guys can uh, you guys can hold on I'll be right back taken care of and you can see the difference here here's a blade I haven't done and uh, here's a blade I just did so cleaned it up real nice so we're all set to put it into the setter no pun intended just lean that over there without damaging my nice furniture that I'm got a little project going on with tell you about that another time anyways get the blade set and what I did was I uh, basically took a workbench put a board down and this just allows for the blade to uh, as I'm rotating it to sort of ride on and then as you know if you've seen the uh, videos Woodland Mills put out there is some slots here you got to get the blade to go in nothing too uh, nothing too fancy about that you can see it slid right down in there and then there's some adjustments which if you own this or if you're going to own this you'll read the manual and uh, basically sets how high that blade sits so that's the first step. Um, what I did with my, my setter here in order to, uh, to make it usable, in addition to putting this board, is I mounted it, this metal part, I mounted it to this piece of wood here, which I then screwed to my workbench, so now it's nice and stable. And then as you can tell, before I put the actual setting mechanism on, as I'm rotating the blade, you guys see how it's rotating there? As it's rotating, it will just ride in that nice uh, flat plane. All right, so there's really only, well, probably two main adjustments that I had to do in order to get this thing dialed in, and I'll show you what those are to begin with. First and foremost, open up the handle, and when you're putting this over top of the blade, notice how it slides through those holes there. Just make sure you go gentle here. You wanna make sure that slot there. back a bit there we go you want to make sure that slot there fits nicely over the blade like so you don't want to ram her down there so that's it it just sort of sits there and uh, if you read the manual it's going to explain all this and in fact it actually explains it with great detail by showing you color coordinated parts of this setter so I'm not going to go into all that detail but what I am going to tell you is there's a few things that I learned in getting this thing going what it was is I need to have a stable base, so I need to have this setter secured to something solid. I also need to have something for the blade to sit on, and so uh, this tended to work quite well. I might improvise and uh, make it better down the road. The other thing I noted is the actual height, and we'll get right down here, the actual height that the blade sits in proximity to this piece at the very back called the anvil is very important. You want to have that anvil right level with the gullet on each on each tooth. That way when you're bending the tooth, you're bending sort of just the top part of the tooth, right? From gullet to gullet, that tooth part upwards. You're not bending anything else. Explains it all in the manual. Another thing I had to learn, because I actually didn't know it, is when you look really closely at the blades, they actually have a bit of a sequence or a bit of a pattern. If you look at this tooth where my index finger is, the top of that tooth is bending towards my right. The next tooth after it is perfectly straight. The tooth after it is bending to my left. Okay, so you're gonna get a bit of a pattern on these teeth, okay? And so depending on what blade you have, that pattern uh, might be different, and so you have to pay special attention to which direction the teeth are already bending. If the teeth are already set in a certain pattern, just keep that pattern going. You're just, you're just putting it back into the manufacturer's specifications. You're not reinventing the wheel here. Well, at least not at my stage of the game. So some other things I learned here, you have to adjust how far that blade travels as it moves through the setter. Why that's very important is within this setter, you won't be able to see it, but within there, 
There's a little piece that looks like this, uh, sorry, this, the set screw. That set screw is what's actually going to put pressure on the teeth. If you don't have that set screw hitting the tooth right in the center, then what can happen is it can actually jump off the tooth, which it won't then set it, or it can actually push it in the wrong location. We don't want that. So it's very important you're adjusting this lever here using this bolt so that when you cycle the blade through the setter, it's going and stopping where a tooth is directly in line with that set screw. That one right there, the purple one. Okay, so that's probably one of the biggest things I had to learn to learn how to adjust this properly. Now this thing will automatically, every time you cycle it, it will cycle three teeth. The reason that's important is every third tooth is going to have the same directional bend, the same set placed on it. And then what you'll do, of course, when you're done setting all the teeth going towards my left, you'll take this thing off and you'll flip it around and do the exact same thing. However, this time around, you are setting all the teeth coming towards my right. How you're gonna actually figure that out is using this indicator, using this gauge here. This gauge, and I'm just gonna put it back to where it was so we can see it. Put that hole lined up. There we go. This gauge here simply comes on like so, onwards. And then what's gonna happen is, as I'm applying pressure here, it's going to measure how much that tooth is bending. Now keep in mind, and it explains it all in the manual and the Woodland Mills videos, as you put pressure and as it bends, there is gonna be some spring back. It accounts for that and it gives you an actual starting point for you to go by. As an initial test to achieve a final tooth offset of 0.215 inches, bend it 0.47 inches. I highlighted that. I started my learning curve using that dimension, using that bend or that, that set. How I actually got it to that point after I, had this, after I had the tooth lined up in the correct position was with this bolt right here. This one, they give you an indication as to how far it should be from the factory, but there is room for adjustment here. So if you want it to bend more, you can bring that bolt in. If you want it to bend less, you can bring it out. You're going to adjust this until every single time you push on these handles and this handle touches the bolt, you get the measurement you want. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you how it works here. I think I have it aligned properly already, but we're just gonna look down below here. It's very important that when this is pointing to that way, that's the set you're gonna be putting on the tooth. Very important you remember that, and very important you look at what tooth is going to be in position to make sure that the teeth that go that way is the f first tooth you're setting. And you guys can't see this, but I can obviously, and that is good. So that first tooth is set up. What you're gonna do, I'm gonna use the handle here. That set screw will contact the top of the tooth shown there in red. It will then press against the indicator plunger. The indicator plunger is directly connected to this indicator, this uh, digital readout. So that's gonna tell me uh, basically what, uh, what to, what to um, set all the teeth to. Okay, and as I mentioned, the number that I was going off of is the one that they specify in the manual, and I'm glad they do, because it gives me a, a ballpark to, uh, to start with. So I should bend it to 0 0.047 inches. Now I have it set in millimeters, so that is equivalent to 1.2 millimeters. So let's see here. When I press this, I wanna see, when this lever touches that bolt, I wanna see it get close to 1.2 millimeters. And as you can see here, the handle is fully touching the bolt. So it's 
uh, right where it needs to be and I'm at 1.08 millimeters and then I let it off so now I've set that first tooth now if I wanted it to get to 1.2 obviously it's not quite there at 1.08 so what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen the screw slightly and push it inwards for our case right now I'm just going to leave it how it is just to show you the basic operation I've set the first tooth what I'm going to do next I've released pressure on the handles you simply do that and it cycles three teeth forward and I just have a look again yep that's the right direction I want to set you'll do the exact same thing again just checking to make sure that the set screw is going to hit the, the center of the tooth which it is and I'm going to press down the lever is touching the bolt and if you look here it's 1.14 millimeters so that one is a little bit further set or bent a little bit further as compared with the other one but if you guys know metric we're talking 1.08 versus 1.14 it's not very uh not very big of a difference in the grand scheme of things and so i'm going to leave it just how it is and then you would simply just cycle it one more time like so and you hold it down and you look there that one is very close to the previous one Oh, it's actually exactly the same, 1.14. All right, so you'll go around, and as I mentioned, you want to mark the teeth, so that way you know where you started. You don't have to set it twice. Once you've done that, the great thing with this is you simply tilt it up, turn it around, and it is a precise fit, right? There's no wobble in this, which is nice. Gently place it back down over the blade. And then the first time you want to make sure that the tooth you're going to bend is bending this way or being set towards my right. You'll get it aligned. So there's a good tooth to start with. I'm going to make sure that the set screw is going to hit it directly in the middle, which it is. And then all you simply do is, once again, you press this fully until this lever bottoms out on the bolt. And then you let go of it cycle it three teeth will go forward and boom you just continue all the way around that's it all right so now that i'm sure that the tooth is going to bend the correct way i'm simply going to repeat the process i'm going to hold down the lever until it bottoms out on the bolt which i have set you'll notice here it is stopping at 1.16 which is very close to 1.2 now i can adjust this again or i'm just going to go with it for our little demo here then I simply let go of my left hand with my right hand. I rotate one position and that jumps ahead three teeth. And we'll do it again. 1.15. We'll do it again. One point one nine. So you can see there's a bit of variation there. But within reason, it's all very, very close. We're talking millimeters here. So that's very, very close. 1.23. You see that one's a little bit over. For me, that is very close. That is completely acceptable for the sawing that I do. My overall impression of this, this thing works very seamlessly. I'm going a lot slower than I normally would. Once it's set up, it simply becomes a matter of squeezing with your left, rotating with your right. Boom, you're done. Before long, you've gone all the way around because remember, you're skipping three teeth every time. Then just go to the opposite side, do the same thing, you're done. You're heading over to the sharpener. So that's it. All right guys, simple as that. This thing by Woodland Mills, the sawmill blade tooth setter is a really good tool. I think this thing is built quite well. I think the value's there as well at 299 Canadian with very few moving parts and the adjustments very simple and easy to do. I think that this thing is going to really put some great accuracy back into my cutting and add to the sharpening, sharpening, sharpening that I'm doing and the revival I'm doing for some of my old blades. So if you guys are looking at one of these, I would definitely say it seems like a good buy. It has worked out quite well for me. There wasn't that bad of a learning curve. There is a little bit of one, but as you can tell by the instruction manual here, they've definitely upped their game by adding some color to the pictures. And they've also reduced the number of words so that instead of searching between the lines for what you have to do, 
you just look at the picture and it tells you right there. So overall great buy and I think this thing will definitely find a good place on my workbench for rainy days when I need something to do. Well, that's just going to do it for me here today, I think. I'm going to finish up this blade and then I've got a few more I still have to do and then before long I'll be putting them back onto the sawmill and we can see how they work. Next time, come on back because what I'm going to get up to is I'm going to show you my first experiences with the Grindlux 4000. This is the new Woodland Mills, well, new to me, Woodland Mills Sawmill Blade Sharpener. I'm going to show you how this goes together very, very well with that setter and show you some of the things that I've learned in the first month or so of operation and first month or so of using it. So that's it for me here today. Appreciate all you guys watching. If you have any questions or comments or concerns about my setup, maybe you've got some experience with this setter and uh, you have some tips for me, I'd be happy to hear it. Guys, thanks again for watching and I will see you all next time.